da da da. What is this? Dan Cannonball coming on 100K. Yeah. So when we hit uh, Bitcoin 100K, I will do a Cannonball. Absolutely. And there were some starred questions that I, I, I starred before we started the show that were pretty good. Uh, one was from JH. And it says, uh, JH says, Rob, if Coinbase goes bankrupt, will my Coinbase wallet be affected? Funny story. So they had actually, uh, this was in, I want to say Newsweek or a big Bloomberg, one of the publications. And you can look it up. Uh, but it talked about how there is no separation between uh, cryptocurrency accounts and the regular money that's in uh, Coinbase and the different funds. So in one of the clauses for Coinbase, if they go down, uh, that crypto that you have in Coinbase, that's theirs. And they can do whatever they want with it to get them out of bankruptcy. I'll, that was the uh, whole article. So here's the thing. Uh, as far as like uh, the Coinbase wallet, I don't not for sure how decentralized that is. Uh, correct me in the comments, but I could be wrong. But if it is your own wallet that has its own mnemonic phrases that you control the keys, then that's different. And if that's the case, then you control it. I personally don't use that. I use uh, these things. They're called ledgers. I got a bunch of them. And uh, I keep them around because I don't even keep all my crypto on one ledger because I think, hey, I don't want to lose it all. So... Uh, uh, use your best judgment as far as that one goes. But if just the exchange, it's going to be theirs. All right. Jay, just again, if I have the seed phrase, can I build a new wall in Bitcoin? Absolutely. So what happened was we live in Puerto Rico, but we vacation in Texas. And uh, I left <laughs> I left my the ledger that I needed to use uh, over there. And of course, when you're doing uh, Ledger Live and connecting it, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's this great website. Well, I think it's great because I'm biased. And it's called uh, danteachescrypto.com. For some reason, it's not right here. It should be. Let me see real quick. Banners, brands, brand color, logo. Nah, that's you, nah, not it. Oh, well. danteachescrypto.com. And what it'll show, let me just show you. How about that? if you go to module two, uh, I'll show you exactly how to use it, how to use any, well, a lot of things, actually. This is the safety module. I'll show you how to use the, the ledger, uh, how to back everything up, how to restore everything from your, your phrase, and so much, and so much more. And here's the great thing. It's 100% free. I made it free. It'll always be free. And I made that because uh, people all the world, they can't afford you know, 10 bucks a month or five bucks a month. So I just made it free. So check that out. Dan teaches crypto. All right, enough shilling. <laughs> All right, that was a good question. And then uh, assuming Coinbase Wallet isn't accessible, is my Bitcoin safe if I have the seed phrase? Yes, that's the big thing. Uh, Another rule, don't buy NFTs, 100% scams. Yeah, maybe. I mean, some people have think they have value. I think if you buy an NFT, that correlates to the deed of a, of a house or something like that? Sure, but that's a ways away, I think. I know some companies are doing it, but I wouldn't really trust right now. Controlled demolition, that's what's going on. The banks don't wanna be left behind, so they crash the price to get as cheap as possible. Very well could be. And uh, if, I mean, if, you, if you were looking at prices in May 2021, and you're like, man, this is an overheated market. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell some things off and wait for everything to crash because that's usually how it works in overheated markets. The, the very, not even the smart money, just the patient money will do that. And uh, some of those have been around for, you know, for quite some time. So maybe that's exactly what's going on. I wouldn't put it past them. It actually makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> NFT equals a JPEG. It's a good one. True. Is proof of work the future? Proof of work, that's Bitcoin, of course. Is proof of work the future? Or will it be proof of stake? There was this great video that had uh, Foss on it. I, I linked it in, in my Twitter account. And he talked about how they were, where was he at? He was in, I think he was in Canada. And he was talking about how the Bitcoin miners that he has that of course they use uh, hydroelectric uh, electricity, but then like eight or nine days during the year, 
they get paid like a boatload just to turn off the Bitcoin miners. Also, the heat that they were using uh, from or that was being uh, taken off or being put off by the Bitcoin miners was being used by hydroponics to actually grow vegetables. It was a very, very good one. I got to cover that tomorrow. And we'll see. I came in from Ben. Ben from Into the Cryptoverse. Dubious speculation. <laughs> I miss bullish Rob. Rob Bear sucks. Lighten up. People kind of giving you their sub stories. Definitely affect your mood. That's true. It does. It has effect on my mood. Like, I, like for investments, not a big deal for me. Like, I know, I know where things. I, I believe I know where things are going. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, I have a three, five, and ten year outlook. Not a big deal. But when people email me and DM me, and it seems like it's like increasing. You know, all those stories, it does affect me a little bit. That's true. Can't help that. You're very kind, Rob. Eh, sometimes. I can be a real jerk. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this is a good question. Nuno. Hi, Rob. What do you expect from Cardano after June hard fork? I expect it to drop in the price, but... Uh, I expect a nice little rally. So if you don't know, there's the uh, hard fork for Vasil. I think it's called Vasil, V-A-S-I-L. And that's supposed to help with uh, throughput or transactions per second and make things uh, a little bit uh, cheaper, as I understand. Although I don't understand that because Cardano is super cheap to use. I don't know if you ever use it. Super fast, super cheap. And of course, people will say, well, it's not because it's not congested. Sure. Uh, but in all... I mean, in the last one, remember when uh, smart contracts came to Cardano? There was a big run-up. I think that wasn't that when we start to hit almost three dollars, and uh, you saw a big, massive run-up. And after that, whew, just kind of fell by the wayside. So, I see that as far as like the price action. But I see, but for some people, they're like, we don't care about the price action. We're here for twenty years, and I see, I see Solana being doing good things, and I'm really happy that I held on to it, even though people call it a. <laughs> even though people call it a ghost chain. Let's see. Uh, great video, Rob. Most people still think, still take big risks. I think you are and will continue to help you over from a stupid decision. I hope. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, yeah, this jersey. So this jersey, this is, uh, this is the World Mobile guys. They, got, they sent me this jersey for talking about their <laughs> we're talking about the project. I got to tell you, like people always ask me, like, how much do they pay you to shill that project? Nothing. And all actual, in actuality, I pay them. I pay, I pay them to get the tokens. And the last one was Fame that was on Dan Degen. And uh, I said, hey, how much can I, you know, can I get into this project? They're like, well, you can only put in this much and the lockup period is longer. And that's it. I go, well, can't I buy any more? Like, no, because we don't want people to dump and that's how it goes for everything now like it's not the 2017 ico craze where you could do stupid stuff like you know buy 150,000 worth of tokens and then the day that it went public you dump it on everybody it's not it doesn't work with that anymore although there was one project that did say that to me and i don't i dropped them what ledgers do you use x the new one i can always get these wrong the ones with the Cool buttons on this. Not the ones in the top. Well, I actually have one in the top. That's an old one, but I got the one the buttons right here. I think it's an X. Uh, let's see. And no, trust me. Or Lanthem's Day. It's not a sexy, it's not a really sexy video. It's not a video that says this is going to the moon or this is the bottom or this is where we're going. It's just rules. I mean, that's a very boring subject. I didn't, I didn't expect this to get many people to actually show up. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you can't use Ada dough. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I can get NFTs. I can do DeFi degenerate stuff if I really want to. I can send transactions. I can send messages. I can, I mean, I, I don't know what else. I mean, shoot, World Mobile which is the whole thing of, of, uh, of connecting telecommunications in parts of Africa. They're built on the Cardano ecosystem. So I don't know. You know what? I got to ask you guys right now, what makes ADA a ghost chain? And what makes it a scam? Could someone put that in the comments? 
I'd like to research that. <laughs> How'd your idiot brother-in-law get richer than you? Well, ah, these people, people are smarter than me. That's what it is. I got some, I got some pretty hardworking people in my family. I don't know. I don't know, Beardy. Thanks for being here, Beardy. Beardy's one of our, our admins. Thanks. Rob, we'll see market reset as happens. Originally. Yeah, it seems like that's just how it goes. And uh, even like, like we've been talking about this the last three or about, about the last two weeks or so about economic resets and the time. Let me show you. I hate when I try to explain things too much. And uh, it doesn't make any sense because pictures tell a thousand words. So this one, we've been talking about this for quite some time, about a week, a couple weeks or so ago. And I think that we're headed for a recession. I think in July, when the Q2 numbers of GDP comes out, it'll be a little re a reduction uh, from what Q1 was. And Q1 already was a reduction. Of course, what is the definition of, uh, of recession? Two consecutive quarters uh, as, they, as they dip in GDP. And I, I don't really, and for, to me, I think we're already there. That's just me. But I just want to remind everybody that, you know, in recessions, like this is in 1969. It lasts about a year and a half, two years. Another one, year and a half, year and a half, year and a half, two years. What's this? Q1, like three, three quarters, less than about a year. This was like two, almost two and a half, about two. But then what I want you to see is all the space in between. That's economic expansion. So if we get a recession, and we're, we're doing not so awful in, in uh, inflation. We'll see how the numbers come out uh, on July 13th, I believe it is. Um, then remember, then we go off to the races. And this is, this is what we want to do. I want, me personally, I want a year and a half to two years of uh, lowball stuff, recession type stuff. And the reason I want that is because of... this so i can just accumulate like i did before and uh, when everything's boring and nobody wants to do that no one wants to do the hard work so that's what i'm waiting for that's just me uh yeah that's true even though it's gonna yeah but sunday swap in the, when the very when it started off in the very beginning it really was pretty slow they got they did better it, it, the, there was a concurrency issue uh my man hashoshi over on the hashoshi channel tried to explain it to me went over my head sure but uh, yeah, hopefully, and it seems like they are getting, that was also um, supposed to be addressed with this uh, Basil hard fork. So great. Oh, I haven't heard about this. Rob, apparently the need, the need to post collateral on NAMI will end after Basel too. Not 100% of this you heard. So NAMI is another Cardano wallet. And you had to post collateral on that, but I guess now you don't have to. That's interesting. I'll just look it up. I don't know. I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I don't know. I don't know. That's right. World Mobile Token. When bicycle. When skateboard. When rollerblades. I'm in okay shape. Thanks. See you, Dad. <laughs> when socks. Ah, that's funny. Yeah, because I... No, I just... I, I had this in my... my uh, my closet for quite some time. I was like, I should probably wear this one day. Yeah, I know. Bunch of hooligans. Shirts like those cause actual wars in England. Yeah. It's the same thing in football here. Not that bad, though. Oh. We're, hold on. Uh, Ada blockchain has never went down, ever. That's true. <laughs> when, when Luna 80K. Uh, uh, Rob, what's your favorite hobbies outside crypto? Staying in shape as best as I possibly can, being with my family, playing volleyball, and uh, actually, you know what I would like to do? Is just work. Work and get things done. On an education platform, the Amazon the drop shipping our FBA business and then the sports facility. And then the real estate stuff is, I don't really, my wife does the, the majority of that. She just brings me the things and says, this is what we need to do. And we do those things. 
yeah, I got to tell you, Puerto Rico is great. It's the obvious place to live when you're in crypto. It's, it's just a great place to live. I think it could be the, I think it could be the next great hub of innovation. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of smart people there that can, that can teach and mentor a lot of people to make that the next great place. That's, just, that's, that's how I see it. No, I was, I'm feeling pretty good. I was kind of down the dumps yesterday. You should have seen that video. That was not good. <laughs> Let's see. Someone said a good one. Where'd it go? When coming to Australia? Never been there. I should probably make a trip there. This is it, Marty. Have you ever had a nine to five? Yeah, and it was awful. So uh, I used to work uh, as a kid as a UPS. Then I went to the military. I'm like, I hate this job. So military and I was a medic and then uh, went into healthcare and healthcare industry and, and uh, medical device sales and then um, management into healthcare companies. And then at around 2015, I was like, I cannot work for anybody. This is not working out for me. And then I just became terminally unemployable as I did a bunch of entrepreneurial stuff. And now here we are. So, yeah. Sol versus rugging. I don't think, well, Sol Land, I don't think they're going to rug rug, but it is a DeFi project, so watch out. Again, there's a difference between the Solana, the platform, the ecosystem, and Sol Lend, the DAP. Oh yeah. Thoughts on gaming coins in the next cycle. Look, if you look at things that have like real utility, like real, real utility, Bitcoin still has it. I mean, if you want to move things across value across the globe in no time, that's the place to do it. If you want to stop your, well, if you want to do for a short time uh, as a store of value, sure. I think store of value is actually even better in stable coins like USDC. You know, if you have the, if, if I had the opportunity and I was in the one example I ever to use is Venezuela, and they pay me in petrol dollars or whatever it is. I'm like, I'm not using this stuff. I go to the, try to get into the crypto exchange as best I could. And I would buy uh, USDC and put all my, whatever value I have into USDC. And uh, that would be it. So that's, I mean, as far as like, like utility goes and Ethereum, I mean, if you're into NFTs and DeFi plays, but we see a lot of problems with that. But if you look at like utility, these gaming coins, like people love to play games. They love to, and here's a stat. And we talked about this on Dan Degen for the Gensukishi token. For, I always think as an American, it's one of my downfalls. And as an older American too, the gaming industry, first of all, it's a multi-billion dollar uh, industry as far as like e-gaming. But also, if you take a look at the amount of gamers that are in North America, it's like 300 and something million, or North America, around 300 million some people. But in Asian countries, it's like 1.5 billion people play games. And to me, it only makes sense to me when you come out with a good game with good graphics and it's a play to earn type of game, you're like, hey, did you like playing that free game? Well, first of all, did you like paying all that money for the game? Now, did you like those free to play games? Well, how about these play to earn games? And they figure out the right token. Not like Axie Infinity, that stupid game. That's like, that game is dumb. I don't understand why people play that. It's so boring. But if you have like a really good game, which really brought people back, had a, had a gamification, those types of plays will play, pay off. And that's why I was so excited about Gensu Kishi, just talking about things, because it already was, it was, it was already a game that had, was over eight years old. It was on PlayStation. It was on Nintendo Switch. It was on Android. And it was on iOS. And they already had a big base of users. And I said, this is the easiest thing of all time. And then I got now Gensukishi uh, spawns off from Elemental Knights. And there you go. So I think this will be the next big thing. Ah, thanks for reminding me, Silicon Valley Stoic. Thanks for the super sticker. I appreciate it. So I eliminated all the um, uh, super chats. If you want to do a sticker, that's fine. But I'm just going to tell you right now, just save your money. Save your money and, uh, you know, invest. Pay for the other things. I don't need it. So uh, stickers, I got to turn those off too. There's no reason. But I appreciate it. I do. But uh, I was getting tired of those super, those super chat things. I'm like, why are people 
I'll answer your questions. You don't have to pay me. Let's see. Moonbeam? Yeah, I learned my lesson on that one. Seems to be a good project. I'm not for sure. And don't say, oh, I dumped all my, I sold my kidney to buy Moonbeam because Rob said it was a good project. It looks like a good project. I haven't done a deep dive into it. Thank you, Nick. Vet is proof of authority. No, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Genso Shishi? Yeah, Genso Kishi. So if you look in the description, in all my videos, it'll say connect with Dan. And it'll have my Twitter account. It'll have my Theta uh, account. And it'll have my second YouTube channel called Dan Degen. And it stands for degenerate. And those are like the super risky plays. So here I talk about the most simplified meat and potato things you can actually talk about in investing as far as crypto or what I do. I can't give you advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But over on Dan Degen, I tell you about the 5% risky stuff I do with my portfolio, which I think I will never see that money again. It's just for funsies. Again, <laughs> real quick, just remember those rules and you'll be fine. No. Uh, this is a great question, and not, but not for me. Do you see Elliott Wave Theory being applied to Bitcoin chart in 2022? Please explain. Go to Ben at Into the Cryptoverse, into his website, or James over Invest Answers. They'll talk about it all day long. Good stuff. Stepping. Good game engine. I do not like stepping, personally. I've had nothing but problems with it. But maybe, that, maybe that's just me. So a lot of people love it, though. I don't get it. I like Sweatcoin, as you can probably tell. You know why? Because it's free. Yes, you made it. We need more Degen. No, we need less of those. And that's another thing. Over on Dan Degen, I don't do a lot of videos. Like the three projects that I reviewed, I've only reviewed three projects since December. December, January, February, March, April. <laughs> Seven months or so. There's just so many bad ones out there. <laughs> You know what? Opinions on token bridge tokens. Have you ever tried to use the bridge? If you're trying to bridge everything from like uh, from Ethereum to Polygon or from Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain, it's kind of a process to get things going. Did a video about it. But uh, token bridge tokens, well, bridging itself is a dangerous situation. We saw that with um, Wormhole. Yeah. So that's all I can say. Step in is not my me neither. You know, I really like Cosmos. I really like Cosmos. I still hold Cosmos. I still think that could be a really good play. And Cosmos is like one of those layer zeros. So that's one of those projects that you can build anything on it. And that's what crypto or the Crow token is built on. That's what Luna built on. And don't, I mean, you can't say anything like, well, it was just, just you know, Luna and everything's bad about it. No. It worked out really well. It wasn't really high transaction fees. It was pretty fast, super fast, I thought. And uh, it was built on Cosmos ecosystem. So that's one to watch. Yeah, there he is. That's on Solana. It's got some pretty good backers. Sam Bakeman Freed and all those guys. So... I hate to bet against them, but you know, you see, sometimes the, the chips start to crack, especially with Solana. You know, the thing that concerns me is all those down days. I know people will say, but it's in beta, Rob, it's in beta. How long are you gonna be in beta? Five years? That one, that's Chloe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> like some of these some of these questions you guys are asking me I, I don't know all these projects <laughs> I have not looked at Rose Rob's dog is Cardano Sam Bakeman is the energy Cannonball in that pool the day yeah I will just waiting for that 100,000 Now, oh. hey, Rob, I know you asked this constantly, probably what's up with Voyager still coming? Yes. You know, somebody sent me an email and said, hey, Rob, there's something funny with, with Voyager going on. Uh, they said that their ADA 
the amount of ADA that they had, the number was reducing that they could take off the platform. And I said, well, when, and we were emailing back and forth. I said, well, when, when did you purchase this, this said ADA? And he said, oh, I purchased it like three or four months ago. And now all of a sudden it's like, at first it was, I forgot what it was, like 150. Then it was, I can only take 134 off. Then I can only take 127 off. And I kept reducing and it didn't make any sense. And I was like, it doesn't, I go, that doesn't make a lick of sense. And that got me concerned. And I took a look at any kind of news as far as like uh, Voyager. And uh, there was some entanglements that uh, have been floated around as far as like liquidity. But then all of a sudden, like today, the guy emailed me and said, yeah, I don't know what happened, but it's all back to where it was. I'm like, ah, that's pretty good. And then, of course, that story that uh, we had talked about, which was... Voyager well, Digital signs, you know, $200 million for essentially liquidity. Uh, you, you can do a lot of things with, with liquidity and you can deal a lot of, deal with a lot of uh, blows. So right now, no, I don't, but that doesn't change the fact of what we talked about with the five rules. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can lose. Everything's a scam. Don't leave anything on exchanges as best you can obviously. And like, like some people will say, well, what about I trust? That's an exchange. Well, it's not really an exchange. It's like, it's, it'd be like calling fidelity a bank, uh, because you, that that's where your 401k is. And, uh, it's an investment platform, but in all honesty, uh, that's keeping your, that's keeping your crypto in a place where it's not your keys, not your crypto. That is true. However, um, I don't keep a large portion of my portfolio there <clears throat> in America. For a Roth IRA, you can only put in $6,000 per year or $7,000 depending on provisions. Uh, so it just depends. And again, like I talked about, sometimes it's pretty hard to put on uh, limit orders when you have nothing on there. Then, of course, no leverage and take profits along the way. That's it. <laughs> Things are goofy. Yeah, I know. I just like to put this pool on the green screen. That's way more fun. Yeah, you guys know this isn't real, right? It's, it's a green screen. I'm actually in my mom's basement right now. And this is a nice, big, fat green screen. <laughs> you never skip leg day. Central land. Yeah, so that's one of those other things like Cosmos. Look, if, if, you, if you think about, if you look at, I, I always talk about for projects, did, did it make the cut? Which is, um, you know, how big is the community? What's the utility? What does it do? Is it something new or different? Or is this the same need to type of thing? Uh, how big is the team? What have they done before? So I can see what they will potentially do in the future. And where are the tokenomics? Am I going to get dumped on and is it worth it for me? So that's the C-U-T-T, -T, the cut. If you take a look at Polkadot, I mean, just take Dr. Gavin Wood. He was part of that Ethereum mafia I like to talk about. And he's done some pretty great things. I think it's undervalued because all the different things you can build on it. And I've never, I haven't heard, you know, out of all the things that are going on, have you heard a lot of negativity about Polkadot? All I've heard, really all I see is like little snippet stories about how they're building things. I think that's something to be, pay more attention to than, than the cheese mayor, the gossip. Oh, thanks, Woody. Ah, that's a good one. So this is Jesse Shimon said, is the FUD we're facing now like it was in 2017? Pretty much, but, um, sorry, it's a mosquito. It's pretty much like that, but a little bit more accelerated because it's just different. Because back then in 2017, listen, the president of the United States wasn't talking about crypto. There was no treasury department talking about or the CFTC or the SEC or senators or, or congressmen weren't, wasn't talking about it. You didn't have like these big institutions uh, getting into it. You didn't have the railways being laid down. It just wasn't like this. And you know what's crazy? Uh, the top of the 2017 market was 840 or 860 billion. It was somewhere in, in, in that range. And right now with all, you know, if you think about it, it's, that is pretty crazy. If you think about all the, the rails and the progress that we've made since 2017, the market cap is just a couple hundred billion more 
than what it was back in 2017. That doesn't make any sense, really. So when I take a look at this, the FUD is, is a little different because we didn't have this many institutions and, and these types of big collapses. But I think once we get through this, and of course, we've never been through a real recession with crypto because that was the whole point of Bitcoin being created uh, because of the 2007, 2008 uh, economic crisis uh, that happened. So, I mean, we did kind of have a, a, a pullback in March, but that was that was a, a facade just because of uh, supply chain issues and the coronavirus. But this is a real, I think this is a real recession. And I think this one, just like we looked at, to me, it only makes sense. It's just like those four-year cycles we talk about. Remember how we just, again, how we said, hey, you know, you have those, those recessions which last a year and a half to two years, and then you have economic expansion for two, four, six, eight years moving forward. To me, it's the same thing as this, having all-time high dip reset. Same thing in 2016 through 2019, same thing in 2020, 2023. It's going to continue on like this. It won't match up perfectly, but uh, I think that's how it all works out. All right, so that's it, guys. There's uh, We went a full hour today, a lot of stuff going on, but uh, that's pretty good. So look, thanks for sticking with me for an hour. I appreciate it. And uh, listening to me rant and, and go on about these, uh, <laughs> these rules we have. So that will be a mainstay from here on out. And uh, post in the comments what you think of it. That's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one. Adios.